many philosophers have tried to demonstrate that humans have a soul. For example, Rene Descartes proposed his mind-body dualism, but this caused more problems than it solved. But what did the infamous, angelic doctor of the church, Thomas Aquinas, say on this issue? And how did it solve the issues that Descartes was left with? Before getting into Aquinas' argument for the soul, we first have to understand what is meant by the terms form and matter. Aquinas, like Aristotle, held to the hylomorphic conception of the material world. Hylomorphism teaches that all material things are made up of matter and form. Take a red rubber ball, for example. The rubber it is made up of is the matter, while the fact that this rubber ball is bouncy, red, and round is the form it takes. We say it's the form, as the rubber could have easily been made into the form of a tire or an eraser. Now, matter by itself does not exist in reality. It can be called, in other words, a kind of potentiality, whereas form acts as an actuality and can exist by itself. It can be said to be immaterial in nature. This will become more important later. But yet again, for any material thing to exist as a material thing, it takes matter and form to come together. Now, it's important to mention that technically speaking, for Aquinas, Humans are not the only beings which have souls. For example, he states in Question 75 of the Summa Theologica, For we call living things animate, i.e. having a soul, and those things which have no life inanimate. For example, a plant has a vegetative soul, which merely keeps it growing and allows it to reproduce. An animal like a bear also has a soul called a sensory soul. This type of soul allows the animal to grow and reproduce like the vegetative soul, but it differs in that it has the ability to react to sense data and has mobility. At the top of this hierarchy of souls is the rational soul, and only humans have this. The rational soul allows humans to think abstractly and to reason differently to animals or sensory souls. What you'll notice is that as you go up the hierarchy of souls, each form or soul builds upon the previous one. But now that we know what is meant by Aquinas' conception of the soul, how does he come to this conclusion that we even have one? Aquinas first started with the idea of forms, which we discussed earlier. Remember that any material thing is made up of matter and form. So when you perceive a dog, for example, the form of the dog and the matter make up that dog. But this form of the dog is also in your intellect when you think about the dog itself. But if your mind was simply matter, then for this form to be in the matter of your brain is for that thing to be whatever is being thought of. So if you think about the form of a dog, when that form of a dog remains in your material brain, it would literally become a dog. Remember that when form and matter come together, they become one material entity. But due to this clearly not being the case, the brain would therefore logically have to be immaterial. Finally, Aquinas also utilized the concepts of particulars and universals. Now, a triangle drawn by your teacher is a particular form of a triangle. It simply is not perfect, and the lines may be off. But when you think of a triangle, you have a universal idea of a triangle. But universals, unlike particulars, are immaterial, since if they were material, then they would be particulars, like the triangle drawn by your teacher. But if this universal is immaterial, it can only reside in an immaterial mind, and therefore, your mind is immaterial. This conception of the soul differs greatly from Descartes. René Descartes thought that the soul was almost entirely independent of the body. This creates the issue with how the soul could interact with the material world. It also creates the issue of the human body being nothing more than a vessel that the soul resides in. Thomas Aquinas, using Aristotle, solves these very issues in his conception of form and matter. While Aquinas would say that there is a distinction between the mind and the body, he would say that they are not independent of each other. For a human to truly be a human, he must bear the form and matter of a human. So the human body is not merely a vessel, but is the actual person. 
Thank you for watching. If you liked the video and want to see more, please consider liking and subscribing. And as always, God bless.